There are a lot of things that change with our body as we age. Our back gets creaky, the joints crack like uh, mini firecrackers, and we become more wrinkled than skin. But something else that changes and is quick to send us to an early death is a change in our immune system. Without a functioning immune system, we're one virus away from a death's doorstep. And unfortunately, as we age, our immune system makes some strange, unwanted changes. And yet, researchers have discovered a way to revive our immune system back to a, a younger, less creaky version of ourselves. Essentially, your immune system is made up of two families of cells, the myeloid family and the lymphoid family. The myeloid family is a more generalized immune system that attempts to eliminate pathogens like bacteria and viruses without much input from the lymphoid system. However, if we encounter an especially devilish pathogen that can't be dealt with through our myeloid cells, our body transitions to rely heavily on our lymphoid immune cells, which are far more specific and trained to combat troublesome pathogens. As we age, the ratio of myeloid cells to lymphoid cells increases until myeloid cells make up far more of our immune system than lymphoid cells do. Knowing that, you can imagine that the problems that that causes, like the inability to eliminate more persistent pathogens, which is a sure way to get highly ill. In addition, having an overabundant myeloid immune profile usually contributes to greater inflammation or chronic inflammation because myeloid cells release many inflammatory molecules. Now, researchers have discovered a way of rebalancing this immune profile to favor more lymphoid cells anew. In this study, researchers used a new technique to eliminate myeloid stem cells, which means that they used antibodies, proteins that look like this that bind in different foreign substances in the body. These antibodies come in thousands of shapes and are generally secreted to attach to pathogens and target them for death. However, the researchers are using antibodies to target myeloid stem cells that preferentially form into adult myeloid cells. How did they do that? And why is that better? Well, first, the researchers isolated stem cells from old mice and young mice and looked at the concentrations of surface proteins, essentially potential target proteins that antibodies could bind to, found on the external section of the cell membrane. We can see that data here. There's a list of cell membrane surface proteins on the left and the farther right representative dot for each go, the more of that protein is present in old cells. So they focus their attention on the three red ones, CD62P, CD41, and NEO1. These three proteins are distinctly highly concentrated in older cells compared to younger cells. Now, they needed a protein that is specific to myeloid forming stem cells that contribute to this uh, unbalanced myeloid dominant immune profile. They identified a surface protein called CD150, which is a highly expressed in myeloid forming stem cells and less expressed in stem cells that form into a balanced profile. I suppose I should hold up here and make sure that you're caught up to speed. Your bones contain stem cells, which turn into the myeloid cells that we've been discussing, or they can turn into the lymphoid cells. A balanced production of both leads to a healthy young immune profile, but an imbalance towards the myeloid leads to the issues that we discussed. So now the researchers have identified different surface proteins that are found on the stem cells that preferentially bias transforming or differentiating into myeloid cells. This is critical because now they have cell signatures that they can focus on it to develop therapies that only target these cells. So what are these therapies and did it work? As I mentioned briefly, we're talking about using the immune system's normal functions like the production of antibodies that bind to antigens or foreign substances. In this case, the researchers injected old mice with antibodies for, you guessed it, the proteins that are highly expressed in these myeloid bias stem cells. So upon treatment, what happened? Well, let's look. 
the red is the control condition. So the old mice that were not given the antibody treatment. The blue is the treated same old age mice. So we're quantifying the amount of myeloid biased stem cells relative to the whole pool of stem cells. As you can see, there's quite a reduction. I won't bog us down by explaining too much on the plot on the right, but this is a flow cytometry data that shows us the spread of the cells that are balanced in their production of immune cells, myeloid and lymphoid, and those myeloid biased up top in the red boxes. The amount of myeloid bias stem cells is much higher in the control mouse derived cells. Additionally, the researchers verified similarly between cells taken from young mice and cells taken from old mice that underwent treatment. And remarkably, the old mice had younger gene signatures, indicating the elimination of these myeloid biased cells helps. You know, I was just about to say uh, euthanize the cells, but in my head, I'm spelling it like uh, youth, as in like Y-O-U-T-H, and trying to say it like a, a verb, like they're being more youthful, but considering the real translation as uh, euthanize with an E, uh, it literally means the exact opposite. But let's be real. Why did we choose the same pronunciation of youth to mean death. Anyway, it all indicates the cell profile of these mice is becoming younger, euthanizing, which is what we want. But if you're curious exactly why attaching antibodies to these myeloid biased stem cells leads to this effect, it's probably because the cells get specifically targeted and then they undergo phagocytosis, which means that they get consumed by other immune cells, basically uh, cell cannibalism. I didn't discuss it, but part of the treatment is to block another cell surface protein called CD47 which itself inhibits immune cells from consuming the cell CD47 is found on. So clearly, if you disable it, that means that the cells are more likely to be eaten up. They also use an anti-kit system, but that's taking us down too many rabbit holes, so let's move on. The point is, the treatment worked in eliminating many myeloid biased stem cells, but there's still two outstanding questions. One, consider that we're talking about eliminating stem cells. So do we see more of the adult cells that we want, the actual lymphoid cells? And two, changing the immune profile is remarkable, but does it actually improve our ability to fight infection? To address the first question, the researchers then measured the terminal cells, the actual lymphoid cells that are produced by the stem cells. And here, CLPs or common lymphocyte progenitors are not quite the fully mature lymphocytes, but it's highly likely that they'll become lymphocytes. So it bodes well. The Y is the samples from the young mice. The A is from the aged mice without treatment. And the A plus C is the aged mice with treatment. As we can see, there is an increase in the proportion of CLPs relative to the untreated aged mice. That's really encouraging. There's some more data like looking at specific types of CLPs, but I'm not gonna try to bludgeon you with the data, rather tell you the story so that you can check out the full study in the description if you're interested. But we still have one more question to answer. And then I'd like to point out another encouraging aspect to this all that I find really exciting. As we discussed earlier, changing the immune profile is remarkable, but does that actually lead to improved immunity? To find the answer, the researchers vaccinated the mice against a particular virus that we'll discuss in just a moment. And they then quantified the number of T cells, which are lymphoid cells heavily involved in the response to vaccines. As we can see in blue, the aged mice that were treated with the antibodies and received the vaccine had a greater number of T cells. These are the terminal lymphoid cells. However, I'll have you notice that there is no young comparison there. The red is the aged mice that were vaccinated, but not treated with the antibody cocktail. So yes, there is an increase in T cells relative to the old mice alone, but we don't know how it compares to young, which is 
really a bummer and it might dwarf the results against the aged condition. The reason I tease that is because of this final datum. I realize this is a bit hectic, but it's easy to read. We're looking at spleen weight, which changes when we are infected. It enlarges. The higher the bars, the greater the spleen size. The black bars are the young spleens, the red bars are the aged spleens without antibody treatment, and the blue bars are the aged spleens with antibody treatment. Then we have vaccination status. If there's a, a plus, that means that the condition has been vaccinated against the virus. And if it's a negative, then it hasn't. Finally, the infected condition, there is the infection by virus with the same plus and minus system as vaccination. Okay, so we see that young mice infected and not vaccinated experience a robust increase in spleen size, which is not experienced when the mice are vaccinated, indicating that the vaccine is effective. However, note that the aged mice without antibody treatment, the ones that still have a myeloid biased immune system, do not experience protection from the vaccine and their spleen enlarges significantly. Finally, in blue, the antibody-treated aged mice, the vaccine is effective in stopping the increase in spleen size. This is a more functional proof that these changes to a balanced immune system allow for better immune responses. So one critique that I have here is that they do not compare the aged treated mice against the young mice. It seems to me that while the vaccine was effective, it might not completely return the spleen to youthful size, but we can't base it simply on perception, so I'm really unsure. So we now have some proof that changing the immune profile via these antibodies does lead to some form of immunity effect. It's cool and really an elegant experiment to look at spleen size too. Now, I also wanted to point out that in a summary review of this paper that we've been going over, the researchers mentioned that although the immune profile is not fully recovered to youthful levels, there are several distinct positives from this study. One, this treatment is a long lasting, so it's not like an everyday antibody treatment and it could boost immunity for weeks, possibly months or more, which is really incredible. One shot and you're done for a long time. That's really crazy cool. Two, you realize this also eliminates many stem cells that might otherwise be destined to become cancerous. That's because if they're myeloid biased, they have some other inherent wrong gene profiles that could predispose these cells to becoming more cancerous. In addition, having a balanced immune profile means less chronic inflammation and reduced overall burden of disease. I think that this study shows how revolutionary immunotherapy can be, and that they've already started looking at it in humans, which I hope to cover for you in the near future. But for now, if you like this kind of work on anti-aging, check out my other work right here, and I'll speak with you over there.